Howdy, and thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Um, I'm going to tell you how to catch bigger bass with less tackle. And by less tackle, I mean lighter tackle. Um, you can go out and you can slam them. You can get those one to five pounders easy. Uh, but a lot of you... Well, you're watching this, you're like, I want to get that 6 to 10. I want that my first double digit. How do I get that? I'm going to tell you how. The tackle you're using is probably uh, appropriate, but it's too heavy. That sounds silly, uh, but I'm going to kind of lean you in to... Uh, how I do it and uh, maybe uh, change the way you're fishing a bit and I think you'll see some results that really impress you. Uh, I start this off by saying uh, if you're in the Connecticut area and you want to go bass fishing hit me up just shoot me a uh, email on the YouTube system and I'll take you out. Start this off uh, a lot of guys Love these trick worms, right? Great, uh, gr great bait. Uh, I mean, it just looks wonderful in the water, and it does a good job. Uh, it's not necessarily something that it's not my go-to. Uh, if I'm looking to do a fish fry, yeah, absolutely, because I know I can get. Uh, I can get a dozen 16 or 12 to 16 inches off this pretty easy and I can use a heavy weight and I don't have to cast far and I don't have to be quiet in my boat because they're juvenile fish and they're gonna fall for these tricks that I'm throwing them hence trick worm right does the whole does every gambit it does most of the work for you we're gonna throw this to the side uh, the fish you see in the picture is uh, the title picture I caught recently um, small lake she knows what she's doing she's not easy to catch but I've caught her and a couple of her uh, sisters out of that lake decent size great fight smart the way they took the bait was almost impossible to detect and had a good good time taking them out as a matter of fact that one in the picture I uh, took a fella out fishing and he pointed out someone at the boat ramp he's like that guy's a professional fisherman you know he's got sponsors don't let that get to you uh, my boat's a 92 it's got 25 horsepower I'll bring, I'll bring in a better fish than him any day of the week. First thing is, how do you take your lures with less, let me get back into this, uh, less weight is going to get you bigger fish. I'm going to show you a quarter ounce bullet weight, huge, ridiculous huge. It's a nice weight. I mean, it's really manufactured well. It slides down the, the line just excellent. Uh, I can cast a mile with this guy. Uh, but it's not natural. The bigger fish get bigger because they're less likely to fall for your trick worm. They're less likely to fall for, well, anything you got going. They've been around the block. They've been hooked maybe once or twice. Uh, they're not falling for it. They're not falling for They see this. They see it sliding in front of your bait. They're going to pass. They may be hungry, but they're going to pass. They know there's going to be more bait. More food. So, how do I catch these big fish? I know I have to cast far. You know, I'm in my boat. I approach the zone. It looks nice. I don't want to get super close because I don't want to spook them. But at the same time, I need to get close to them. How do I get close to them? I can use this quarter ounce weight and get there. 
or I can use one of these 16th ounce weights and get just as close. I'm going to tell you a first trick. It's not really a trick, it's an understanding of your reels, your lines, rods, how it all works. I've got two rods and reels right here. First one is just a basic Shakespeare. Uh, this is the GX230. Some people will call it cheap and they won't even touch it. Second one is a it's a pin reel. Uh, retail for about $85. It's got every, oh man, I tell you this handle is super nice. It's just so nice. It's not even funny. You know, the bale is so, everything about this thing is just nice. It's so comfortable to fish with. But, which one of these casts further? Right now, they both have 10 pound um, fluorocarbon. I, I just use straight fluorocarbon. Um, my budget for line is a little bit higher than most. I don't spend a super big amount of money on, on line. I just find the good deals. So they're both using the exact same line. But right now the pin will not cast as far as the Shakespeare. Why is that? It's because the line on the reel itself I have less. You can kind of see that black line on the pin near the top of the bale or spool. It's not completely full so when I cast it the line will rub here. It won't cast as far. I have a $15 reel that will cast further with less weight than the 85 plus dollar reel. Why? Less friction as it comes across. So make sure, key trick here is make sure you have enough line on your spool. If you don't, take it off uh, and replace it. You don't have to waste it. You can put it onto a uh, empty spool or a uh, these are medium, so I could put it on an ultralight or a light and fill them up completely. So, this guy will inherently cast further because there's less resistance on the cast. It's just as, as far as actually catching the fish, this guy is just as good as that guy. But as far as being comfortable while you're fishing, yeah, the pin's gonna win. So, I make sure I have my spools completely full. <clears throat> Second to that, talk a little bit about your bait. One of my favorites right now, especially this time of year, is this uh, power bait. I'll let the chigger crawl. I've gone, I've done gone through this whole package and another, and I've had a great time and caught a decent amount of fish with them, and one outstanding fish. Uh, they just have a really impressive action, uh, especially if you have some polarized sunglasses and you kind of watch them dance near the boat. You'll be really impressed. They look like crawfish. Uh, they look that way to the bass. So, I want to cast this guy out, and I want to get him in that spot that I think the big female largemouth is waiting. How do I get her there? Easy way is this quarter ounce bait, or quarter ounce uh, bullet weight. Texas rig, this is going to get him out there. Less line on your reel, it'll do it. But what does that do, that heavier weight? Instead of floating on top of the weeds, where a crawfish would be, or maybe two or three inches under, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring her down, all the way down. She's going to dive deep, and she's going to be outside of that strike zone. 
So you got your bass just kind of hanging out one, two feet off the bottom inside of four feet of weeds. This guy just goes right down to the bottom. And it only has a couple, half a second, maybe one second to decide whether it wants to eat it. Well, two ways around this. Get it out there further by having a proper amount of line on your reel and use less weight. I've got this hook right here. I think it's an eagle claw. Uh, it doesn't say it doesn't stay super sharp. It's definitely enough to it'll let you know it's there. Uh, but it has this small amount of lead right here. You rig them up. Lead stays under the body. Your hook stays in line with the body. When it rests in the weeds, it rests like that. A little tap. Looks like a crawfish that's up to something. Maybe found some food, chilling out. Your bass is like, yeah, I'm going to eat that guy. Texas rig, no weight. Do a couple things. You can use a 5 out hook. Uh, if I had a bigger version of that, I'd use a 5 with this weight. These gamakatsus, man, they're super sharp. Uh, don't play around with them. They stay sharp, too. Uh, hook's too big, though. It's going to add a little bit more weight than what I want to play with. I'm going to go ahead and go with the 4 odd. And this tiny little weight. Key to using these tiny little weights. I've got a couple kind. I've got this uh, Bass Pro Shop. And then here I have my Gremlin, so Bass Pro Shop on the right, Gremlin on the left. Uh, Gremlins, they, the hole on them is pretty nice. Slides up and down the line easy. Bass Pro Shop one, the hole is much smaller. It seems to be compressed like the mold's getting old. I'll take a toothpick and I'll kind of round out the edge of that hole so it doesn't hang up on the line to min minimize my line twist line twist uh, on a spinning rod is a real thing especially if you're using fluorocarbon uh, never never reel against drag if you're pulling and you're stuck in the weeds don't reel at the same time you're pulling make sure there's slack before you reel just keep that in mind even if you have a fish on don't reel while they're running let them run when they take the little pause, when they're going to figure out which way they're going to turn, that's when you reel as you lower the reel, the rod down. So, got another trigger, uh, chigger crawl here. That's what they look like when they're not all beat up. One thing I really like about them is they stink to high heaven. They smell like crawfish. They smell like live crawfish. Uh, the bass don't like letting go of these guys. They got them in their mouth. They feel like a crawfish. They taste like a crawfish. And they're willing to ignore that line that's kind of hanging out of their lip. Uh, the big one in the picture, well, I don't know how big she was. I didn't weigh her. Didn't have a scale that day. But I felt her inhaling. Boom. Inhale. In the mouth. Paused. And I waited till I felt the, she's swimming back down to the depth that she feels comfortable thump. And just gave it a nice straight up tug. Nothing crazy, especially with these super sharp hooks. If it's a new hook, you don't have to go uh, super mad there. You just kind of gentle, gentle set, straight up. Nothing to the side because you'll rip it out of their mouth. Or maybe you'll hook them in a soft spot in the mouth. Um, another thing about using weights that are too heavy is there's another worm of mine. Uh, it's a Gander Mountain. I really like this guy. He's it's what a five inch uh, stinks to high heaven black worm. This is a great bait. But if I use it with a quarter ounce weight and I put it on the tip of here through a Texas rig, it sinks straight to the bottom in the worst of weeds. It doesn't matter how you, and you could rig it up any way you want, it's going to work its way down to the bottom. Less time in front of the face of the fish, less time for them to decide. It's still cold here. They're going to be picky. They've seen this before. They know it hurts. 
largemouth bass aren't the smartest fish in the in the lake, but they know what hurts. They remember what hurts. And as much as this tastes good and looks appealing, if it brings back a memory where they see this guy, they'll pass it up. Maybe not that five pounder, the one you'll be impressed with, but you want that seven, seven to ten, maybe twelve, maybe twelve plus. That guy will remember this. He's not going to touch it. He'll watch it go down. You'll never know he watched it. She watched it. So, kind of finishing this up. I'm going to keep it as uh, quick as I can. Um, another benefit of having fluorocarbon is the line sinks. You're using monofilament, not quite the same effect. So the fluorocarbon mixed with this 1 16th ounce weight will get your bait to where you need it. It'll allow you to cast just as far as you need to cast, depending on whether your, your reel is spooled properly, and it'll get you a bigger fish. And I know everyone's like, oh, no, that's not going to get me a bigger fish. My uncle told me this, or... Saw this guy at a tournament, he did that. Negative. This will do it. It's harder to see this guy. We got another crawfish going through. Here we go. <clears throat> One thing I do is, uh, you got your, your eye. I'll pull that all the way inside the crawfish so it hides the knot. A lot of guys will put a little bead there so your Texas Texas rig weight hits the bead before the knot I just pull the bait over the knot so the weight hits the soft plastic same effect less nonsense less things to spook them uh, this guy still stinks she didn't want to let go of it I pulled her through some nasty weeds buddy of mine grabbed her with the net and had a good day so don't hesitate to pick up some hooks like this, uh, especially when everyone else is using a Texas rig and they're not catching fish. Try to use something a little less obvious. Uh, maintain the silhouette of the bait you're using. Use fresh bait. This guy stinks. They love that. And uh, lastly, one of the most important things here is don't be in a hurry when this crawfish is coming through the weeds you know bass don't like direct sunlight in their eyes now it doesn't hurt them some people say it actually makes them nauseous I say well they'll go there if that's where the food is um, but this guy just a little tug on your reel or on your rod just in the water it makes these guys he says flap like mad, makes his legs wiggle, and it, it gives it the right light, right presentation. Um, the slower you reel this guy, the bigger the fish you're going to get. <clears throat> Once you feel that thump, give it a second before you set the hook. The bigger guys are more willing to spit it out faster. <laughs> given that they feel that something isn't right. So slow presentation, minimize your weight, wait before you set the hook, wait until it's the proper time, set the hook correctly, straight up, and uh, you won't have as many problems setting the hook if you're using fluorocarbon, it doesn't like to stretch, but why do I use fluorocarbon? Well, it's not that much more expensive and it's invisible in the water. I got a buddy of mine who comes out with me all the time and he's got this white line he loves and he casts for miles. And I'm actually impressed with this line for his casting ability. But the only thing he catches is pickerel. Uh, pickerel you you fart in the water and pickerel are after it. So just kinda think about those things next time you're out fishing.
uh, about your presentation and where the bait's going. Doesn't take much weight to drag it through the weeds. So, um, also if you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. And I have no doubt if you take my silly little tips, uh, tips here about how to treat your reels and how to present your bait. You'll walk away with a bigger fish than well you probably ever caught before. Sometimes I spend up to five minutes on a retrieve. People look at me like I'm crazy. You spent five minutes on a retrieve? I did, but I we pulled in that seven pound largemouth. And then I pulled into the boat dock and I watched that tournament that was weighing their fish and well Number two or number three barely had enough weight just to cover that one fish that I caught. <clears throat> Not that I'm better than them or this or that. It's just I'm focusing my technique to catch bigger fish as opposed to a smaller one. Uh, you want to catch dinner? If I, Sometimes I do. I go out for dinner. Big weight, nice sharp hook, a lot of action, crazy. Those younger bass will fall for it, but that big birthday that you're looking for... You're probably watching this video for. She ain't gonna fall for it. So I'm gonna quit rambling here. Go check your lines. Make sure you spooled properly. Tie good knots. And take your time. And I think you'll be surprised what you get. Thanks.